Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today I'm going to do something I've been putting off and try and get my teeth into the engineering gameplay coming with the 4.5 patch. And I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat anything, engineering has had me a bit worried. Thinking of the most common sci-fi series tropes, be it Chewie on the Millennium Falcon, Scotty on the Enterprise or Kaylee on the Firefly, the ship's engineer is a pivotal role and being able to cobble together enough spare parts to keep your ship flying when it shouldn't has the potential to be a rewarding, immersive part of the experience. But the execution and implementation of it has a bunch of potential pitfalls, and given that SC has been, for me at least, in a really fun place for the last six months or so, the potential for changes to come in and overcomplicate things and steal fun out of the game is just at the front of my mind, and I figure probably I'm not the only one. So I thought it would be cool to just force myself to learn about the new systems in the PTU and put this dummy's guide together to hopefully make things just a bit less scary. And if this sounds good to you, grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, then let's get into it. So full disclaimer at the beginning, this is in no way meant to be a comprehensive guide to becoming an engineer. The gameplay is brand new and it will likely change over the remainder of the PTU cycle and in the coming months as things get rebalanced. What I'm aiming for instead is just enough education to perform. I've been trying to get to grips with the basics and the preparation I'm going to need to think about when I'm taking my ships out for a spin in 4.5 and now I just want to condense that and share it with you. I also think there's a tendency to look at it as one massive change that changes everything. Whereas engineering is actually a series of smaller changes wrapped up into one patch. And when you look at them individually, it's not quite so overwhelming. So let's start by taking a look at the engineering terminal. And I'm going to use my Anvil Paladin for this. It's a newer ship, so everything was made with engineering in mind, and it provides a clear example to my mind. The terminal is a panel that you can interact with that is effectively the control center of your ship system and the engineer's viewport into exactly what is happening within the ship. The first page gives you a 3D view, but starting along the top we've got a bunch of status readouts. As of patch 4.5, ships now have armor, so we can see the integrity of that and how much it's been depleted. Then the same for whole HP. And next we have important monitors for our cooling systems and our life support. Cooling is way more important this patch, since as we'll come to, it ensures that your components don't overheat and ultimately catch fire. We then have readouts for hydrogen fuel levels and an indicator for SEM versus nav modes. And finally along the top we've got a notifications bar, so you can see warnings as they come up or track when things have been fixed. If you're looking to be the chief engineer on board a capital ship like an Idris, this will probably come in very handy. Next up we've got the 3D map itself, and I think it's easiest if we start by using the filters to look at this one at a time. So first let's just select doors and deselect everything else. Just like with the F2 map, you can drag this around by holding left mouse button and dragging your mouse to change the view, helping you to see different decks. So each door on the ship can be controlled from this station, and we can open and close them as well as locking them individually. Next up, let's take a look at systems. This lets us see all the various components on the ship and their current status. This here is my Maelstrom power plant. If you hover over it, you'll see the component HP, wear and tear damage taken, and its temperature. In this case, a calm 21 degrees. Any with an R next to them are relays, where you can see your current fuse count. If you or any of your crew aren't sure of exactly where a certain part is located, this can also be really useful for helping you work it out. And particularly if you're running a multi-crew engineering team, you can combo the doors and system controls. For instance, I could just open the door on one of the power plants I want the others to look at. And finally, we've got rooms, where you can see the various rooms and their status. Seeing that they're pressurised and the ambient temperature. As long as life support is running, the temperature is going to be maintained. 
but if it goes down then you could lose control of that and see increased fire risk as a result. Now switching to the config tab, we essentially have the PIP system that up until now you primarily see on the pilot MFD screens. On the left side you see your power sources from your power plants, which you can then spend over on the right hand side between guns, thrusters, shields and QT under core systems, and then radar and life support and then coolers to the right of that. You can use the presets tab to create specific presets to rapidly shift power around. Add one with the plus sign, rename it to something catchy, and then just hit the edit to key to set up where the power pips go. You can then use these to just switch back and forth between different priorities on the fly. So before we get on to damaging anything, we're going to want to think about the tools of the trade. And for the most part, the shop I went to is Platinum Bay. You can find a bunch of these in the stations around Stanton. A lot of this stuff is also for sale at Dumpers Depots and the various shops at the Providence Industrial Platform at Orison. But do just check out Cornerstone's Universal Item Finder if you're looking for exactly where these things are. I'll include a link down in the video description. Platinum Bay for sure will stock the full range of fuses, Cambio SRT light attachments for the Greycat multi-tool, and the larger Cambio SRT dual-handed salvage and repair tool. You'll also need canisters for your tool. And you can buy empties from the shop and fill them by hand with the tool's salvage mode, just left click when you're next to a ship hole with the shields off, or you can scrape up some RMC with a salvage ship like the Vulture and print yourself a bunch of canisters. You can also use salvage ships to craft all the attachments and fuses, but these will need some combination of RMC and construction mats, so I think my preference is going to be for buying my fuses and attachments, and then just bulk printing a ton of full canisters to keep my supply of RMC topped up. So now we're stocked up, let's start thinking about what could go wrong on board our ship. Let's kick things off with the fuse relays. So using the 3D map we can identify where our relays are on the ship. So here on the Paladin I've got one right next to me in engineering, one up on the bridge and one down on the lower deck next to the gunner's cockpit. So on the display I can see that these are all functional with two fuses in each and they're coming up white as a result. So let's go ahead and just pull all of those out. Now back at the console you can see these relays have turned red, indicating there's an issue. If I just go ahead and pop one of those back into the relay, now this one has turned orange, showing that we've got some capacity there but not full. As a result of my relays being down, I've lost some of my available pips from my config screen. And this is nowhere near as punishing as the first implementation. If you want to keep your ship operating at peak capacity, you're going to want to keep those relays stocked up. But how about we take some proper damage? I'm sorry my sweet paladin, but let's introduce you to a bit of pew pew. Now that it's had a proper slap, let's get back on board and take a look at the terminal. And you can see that the armour has been melted off, and it's no longer going to mitigate any DPS that we take, and a bunch of the components of weapons are yellow or red, indicating we've taken damage. But it's not all that much, just slipping down to 99% or so on my uh, power plants, Though my guns, which are on the exterior of the ship, have taken more of a beating. Still, this is where we can use the repair tools to just touch them back up with the right mouse button to use the repair mode, and they'll be good as new. You can also repair the external guns back up, even at 1% they'll be able to fire. But you do need to make sure that you also repair the turret assembly itself though, as they're often in two different parts with the gun and the assembly. But what about the showstopper, because I'll be honest, up until testing all of this, I had some nightmares that my ships were constantly going to be spontaneously combusting under my feet. So the good news is that I had to really try pretty hard to commit arson on my own ships, and I found the C1 the easiest to turn into a tinderbox. Essentially, when components take damage, in particular when your coolers are down, there's a chance that they start overheating and catch fire. My intention here honestly was to brick the cooler and then set the power plant alight since they seemed like the most combustible component, but the cooler itself decided it was time to burst into flames. And this is definitely a highlight going into the new patch, coolers are absolutely essential. If they go down, get them back up as a priority. Conveniently the devs have placed fire extinguishers where they might most be needed, helping to suppress the flames. But realistically, I think a fire on board is likely a death sentence as a solo operator. 
The system reminds me a bit of the one we had in Atlas, where someone would need to damp the flames while someone else repaired the parts of the ship. However, it is worth noting that if you want to make it to a pad, just repairing the ship will get everything back good as new. I did also note that full power plant death in a ship like the C1 gives you a critical warning as the pilot and a countdown. So I thought I'd just stand around and see what happened, which um, apparently wasn't too smart. Thank god for free healthcare. So I think we'll leave it there for now. There is going to be way more to consider with engineering, but personally for me this process of running through the basics has just eased my mind somewhat going into 4.5. It's not as crazy as I worried, and actually once broken down into smaller pieces, it's not too overwhelming. I actually think the direction is positive for two reasons. Firstly, balancing aside, as I would fully expect CIG to go too hot and too cold with things like time to kill before they get it to just right, I think there is the potential that rather than making the game tedious, the changes just give you a way to get your ship back from the dead. Whereas in past patches, you may just have blown up, Instead, you'll find yourself on a potentially burning wreck. And at that point, you can always choose to abandon ship, or maybe you and your crew can stick it out, fight the flames, repair the components, and get the ship moving again, even if it's just as far as the nearest landing pad to repair properly. And secondly, this rewards preparation and planning. Before coming to SC, I was a full-blown survival game junkie. My bread and butter was games like Ark Survival and Last Oasis. And there's something about getting prepped that really appeals to me. So on the one hand, we'll undoubtedly have folks who just ignore the engineering mechanics, no shame in that at all. But for others, they'll go out fully equipped with stocks of RMC canisters, repair tools, boxes of spare fuses, and potentially even spare components on board to switch in as replacements when others take damage. So it opens up room for skill expression, particularly in multi crew gameplay, that just isn't about how good you are at corkscrewing or getting your pips on the target. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Are you looking forward to these changes? Are you gearing up to be the new Scotty? And has this video, to some extent at least, maybe eased your mind a little? As ever, if you think I deserve it, then I would massively appreciate if you liked, and please do hit subscribe if you haven't already. And do pop into the Discord, the link's just in the video description down below, where we'll be testing a lot of this on a lot more ships. But with all that said, thanks for watching to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.